Joining me now is Councillor Paul Brading, the man in charge of education for the Isle of Wight Council on the island. To start with then, Paul, obviously we've seen in the news, we've seen the Prime Minister say that he plans uh, for some uh, areas of schools to reopen on June the 1st. What exactly will be happening on the Isle of Wight? Um, the Isle of Wight is in a really good position, really. The schools have worked really hard, uh, not only since lockdown, as long ago as you know the 20th of March, They've also started up during the Easter and half-term holidays. On top of that, they've actually been preparing now, of course, for uh, a reopening for year R, year one and year six, with effect from Monday the 1st of June. Um, they obviously now announced on Thursday that it's going to happen. Um, and I'm pleased to say that um, we've checked this morning, uh, 26 of our 40 primary schools will be doing that from Monday morning. Um, six will be doing it from Wednesday morning, there's a couple of days allowance on a couple of some of the schools, and there's only eight schools that won't be in a position to offer that service from the 1st of June. They will in fact be starting their service on the 8th of June. Um, so by the 8th of June, all our 40 schools will be um, complying with the government guidance, but they'll still all be open next week anyway for the vulnerable children and the key workers. Brilliant. And obviously you said 26 schools will be opening. What are the, the eight that won't be until the, the uh, ju June? The well, so, so 26 are ready to go on Monday. Uh, there, there's um, six schools that, that had some other things booked in, like development days and bits and pieces. They'll, they'll be opening by, by Wednesday morning. Uh, and, and eight schools we've discussed individually. I, I, I don't want to you know name the schools. It's unfair to do so. They've all worked towards this date. But there's been a bit of slippage in some of the schools that we've worked with them, and we agree that uh, you know the eighth of eighth of June for them is the preferred option to make sure they get everything lined up. Okay, and obviously a, a lot of you know parents, it's been in the news as we said, are concerned about um, you know opening on on June the first. They're obviously yeah. rightly concerned about the safety of their children. Of course, just yesterday on the island, you know, Christ the King College, which was open for emergency provision, had to close due to to someone there testing positive. Uh, they had limited number of pupils at the school already because obviously they were doing emergency provision for obviously uh, key workers. So. Does having more pupils at the school and opening to a greater number of pupils mean there's a greater risk? I don't think it is really. I mean, it's a really complex task for getting, you know, education system going again. And so we've had a, a really good number of pupils attending from the vulnerable uh, children and the key workers' children. So a lot of the schools have been already working very hard at uh, implementing some of the requirements that they are now requirements to reopen for the, the early years in year six. Um, greater numbers. Yes, but the way it's going to operate uh, with smaller classrooms, uh, you know, no mixing, staggered times, I don't consider the risk to be any greater. Uh, if, if I did, I wouldn't be you know, recommending schools open because uh, you know, it's, it's a complex task, but make sure by following the national guidance, all schools will be uh, able to operate uh, as safely as possible. Of and course. regarding Christ the Kings, yes, there, there was an incident and Christ the Kings took advice from Public Health England. Uh, but Christ the Kings itself, I believe, is opening up uh, next Wednesday, uh, for the vulnerable children and children of key workers again. So they, they took the advice, as we would always you know, recommend they did, and then they followed the guidance. People on the island then, they, they want to know really what specifically the Isle of Wight Council is doing, what individual schools are doing to ensure that they are uh, their kids are being kept safe. What can you tell us, you know, what safety provisions have been put in place ready for, you know, some years reopening? Yeah, I mean, every school, every educational setting uh, was required uh, to undergo a really thorough health and safety assessment uh, before opening to identify you know, any measures uh, that need to be in place to reduce the risk of any uh, chance of, of getting infection or spreading it. Um, those have been done. They've all reported to us that risk assessments have been done. Uh, they work with officers and our, the local learning partners. Obviously, the head teacher signs off the risk assessment, as you would for any business. Uh, we, we've worked with them to make sure um, that you know, they complete the health and safety assessments. Uh, if they had trouble with them, we help them work through them um, to make sure that you know they have complied thoroughly with the government requirements. And I'm you know happy to say that they they have. And by Monday the 8th, every primary school will be open. Uh, for, uh, well, extended opening for the you know, years required on top of remaining opening for the you know, vulnerable children and key worker children. But I think the fact we had so many key worker children, vulnerable children in, has helped the school already with some of its uh, measures. I've heard some you know, really good stories from parents about uh, you know, how children are coming home and washing their hands automatically now. And some of the stories I've heard have you know, really been encouraging. 
but obviously, of course, there's lots of stuff to read, lots of government guidance, lots of opinions. Um, you know, there is no right or wrong to this complex situation. It's about doing what, uh, you know, what we feel is right, but most importantly, what's right and safe for the staff and the pupils. And I don't know whether you've seen the uh, the report by the uh, the National Education Union that, that came out uh, either today or, or yesterday, actually. But some teachers across the country have raised um, concerns about uh, lack of hand basins in school, not enough hand sanitizers in classrooms or ent- entrance or exit points in the schools, not enough lidded bins uh, and not enough PPE. Um, of course, that's, you know, not just not not on the island specifically, but that's across across the country uh, generally. Yeah. Can you give assurances that there are enough, you know, hand basins, there are enough hand sanitizers and stuff like that for, for the kids uh, going into schools on Monday? I say there's been a lot of opinion, a lot of comments. Um, I would fully respect the view of the NEU. Um, they're, they're there to represent their members. Um, they've had fortnightly meetings with my officers to discuss all their concerns. I've had numerous email communications with all the unions, um, and, and we, you know, by sticking to the, the risk assessment that is required to make the schools safe, that will include all the things around um, hand sanitizer, wash basins, toilet facilities. That's all part of the risk assessment. PPE, uh, the p- issue of PPE, although well, staff aren't recommended uh, the need to wear PPE, all school needs to have PPE for a simple reason. If, if a child showed any symptoms during the day, uh, the parents would be asked to come and pick the child up. That child has to be put in a separate room whilst waiting for the parents to pick them up. And an adult would need to sit with that child, but the adult would have to have full PPE. And again, that's part of the risk assessment that was required to, you know, for schools to sign themselves off to be fit to open. Uh, and the, yeah, the, the PPE is, is there for those schools that need it on, on that basis alone. So, so you can confirm that, you know, as part of the risk assessment process that these, you know, uh, provisions have been put in place, hand sanitizers and, you know, hand basins, stuff like that, that, that is in it, place. It, yeah, it, it was a requirement of the government um, health and safety checklist to be done for, for our schools to reopen. Um, that's all been done, all been signed off, which is why, you know, the, the schools say they're ready to open on these dates and confirm that they've done all they needed to do uh, to be ready. And as you quite rightly said as well a bit earlier, obviously, you know, measures in, in place in certain schools differ depending on, on uh, you know, what kind of school environment it is, what, what school is, what they need and stuff like that. In terms yeah. of uh, the island's SEND schools for, for the SEND pupils there, uh, obviously there's going to have to be uh, more kind of stringent measures in place there. Is that, has that been discussed between, between the SEND schools for them pupils? Yes. I mean, they've quite a high percentage of their children have been in um, during this situation, um, and so there, there has been an awful lot of you know of uh, you know discussions with the schools, working with them to make sure they are ready to open safely. But then they, they will be ready to um, all the measures are in place, and SEND has been taken care of completely. And if I can put one scenario to you, one that's kind of we've been asked quite a lot is. For example, if a child arrives at school with a symptom of coronavirus, but they don't tell a teacher until later on the day, on that day, does that mean yep. every student in their class or that they've come into contact with then has to go home and self-isolate along with the rest of the family? Well, this, this, yeah, so the school will take guidance from Public Health England immediately. And if, if, if your advice was for that bubble to be uh, kept off school, because they're going to work in, in you know, 15 in a class with one teacher, they're going to avoid maximum of 15. Some schools obviously can't do 15. Um, they will be um, encouraged not to mix with other people. So if we like that one particular bubble would be isolated, would may have a problem, then obviously public health England would advise the school, as would we, some authority, what they needed to do. And if it was, you know, closing down, getting people tested, telling the wider family, of course that would be done for safety to protection of everyone. And a lot of councils in England, you know, I think it's more than 35 now, they've warned that uh, primary schools won't be ready to, to reopen by the June, June the 1st. They've taken their own public health advice on board rather than Public Health England. And they've said that, uh, you know, it, it's not logistically possible. It's not safe yet. Sheffield Council, for example, was, was one today and they, they've agreed not to, to actually open the schools until the 15th. Why isn't the yeah. Isle of Wight Council one of those? Well... My decision was always to follow government guidance, uh, providing it was safe to do so. The government guidance came out. Uh, our schools have worked really hard to make sure they're following government guidance uh, and, and have, you know, com- you know, given the OK that they've done it all, they're ready to go. The risk assessments have all been completed. 
Uh, yeah, I'm really grateful, and my thanks go to all the education providers in the island that have got their schools ready to welcome children back into school from the 1st of June. So we didn't think it, if I didn't think it was, uh, they were, had done it or it was safe to do so, then yes, each council makes its own decision. But um, yeah, my decision was to follow government guidelines, providing schools did what they had to do, and I'm grateful that they have. Why are you not advising head teachers and governors that they, they don't need to open unless they're confident that it's safe to do so? Why, why is the decision think, being yeah, kind yeah. of made for them? No, no, well, we asked all schools uh, as a government to follow government guidelines and prepare themselves to open on the 1st of June uh, by completing uh, relevant risk checks, working with the local authority at the same time to make sure that they were, you know, they were able to comply with all the requirements um, to be ready yeah, to open on the 1st of June. And uh, I'm really grateful that our schools have managed to do that. They've managed to, apart from the, the 8th, that will be opening on the 8th of June. Um, yeah, we work with them on the reasons why they're not ready to open on the 1st. And yeah, we, we, so this, you know, 20% of the schools aren't ready for that date. The rest are. So in line with government guidelines, well, happy, I'm happy to, you know, happy that they do so because they've complied with all the requirements. Uh, if something, God forbid, did happen, are the Isle of Wight yep. Council prepared to take accountability for that? Well, I think by all the schools following the, the relevant requirements, they, yeah, I'm not, not anticipating any problems. It's not about apportioning liability. It's about making sure that environments are created um, to make schools safe for, you know, the return to education. Um, the yeah, key years involved, you know, year R and year one, they are key years at the start of educational journey. Um, and year six is a key transition year. And as we go forward, obviously, the government have announced that they're looking at potentially on the 15th, um, secondary schools um, returning for yeah, for year 10 uh, and, and they're working towards that um, it's about trying to return education system to, to normality um, and safe for the children to continue their education um, and by following the guidance I think, I think that's the right way to go and obviously we know education is incredibly important but that can be kind of that can be done without people having to go into school. We've seen that, you know, live kind of online learning sessions can, can kind of take place now. For example, having like 15 pupils on the Skype call and a teacher could be there to, to answer the questions for them then. Is it not still too early to be physically bringing them back? I don't believe it is. If, it, if, it, if it's done in, in, in the way that's been recommended, with smaller, smaller classes, smaller bubbles, um, I think some of the learning from um, schools in lockdown may be a way of, you know, educating certain groups in the, in the future. I think a lot of learning has come out of coronavirus pandemic for lots of sectors. And uh, you know, I think there's definitely learning there going forward for the future. And obviously we've seen then teachers on the island, they've completely kind of adapted to the pandemic, haven't they? They've had, we've had, you know, fun videos sent to us for, of, uh, of staff recording songs, messages to, uh, to the children saying, we hope to see you back soon. What, uh, what would your message be to, to all those teachers who have had to adapt during the pandemic and, and you know, do all those online sessions that uh, some schools have been, have been taken, uh, taken into uh, account and, uh, and obviously, you know, keeping spirits up amongst the pupils? Uh, without wishing to be condescending, I think teachers have done a phenomenal job um, during this, what is now you know, nearly a 10-week lockdown. The way they've adapted, the way they've cared about their pupils, uh, the way they've set them work, they've kept in touch with them, and they've found really innovative ways of um, <laughs> providing education um, to, to keep the children stimulated. I think it's been absolutely brilliant. Uh, and, you know, they've worked through uh, half-terms, um, without any problems, they're happy to do that. It's after vulnerable children and children are key workers. It's been an absolute phenomenal effort by all this, all the staff at schools uh, to get to where we are. Um, and you know, uh, some, a lot of the lessons that have been learned, I'm sure, will shape the way education goes in the future. We're not sure how many children are going to turn up on Monday because obviously that is very much a parental choice. Um, you know, whilst it's recommended that you know children go back to school now, and the scientific medical ex um, evidence that it's safe to do so, it still remains a parental choice at this stage as to whether children return to school. And, and I respect the views of all parents. I've spoken to numerous parents, um, and you get some are really grateful, think it's the right idea. Some think it's not a good idea. Uh, there's issues regarding families that have got, uh, say, two primary age children. Uh, one year's going back and one isn't isn't going back. We hear that is going back, the child doesn't want to, and the one that isn't going back, the child does want to. So there are all sorts of issues like that 
um, that parents will, you know, make a decision. Well, I said to all of them, listen to the advice, talk to your school, for, and ask the school what they've done to make the environment safe, because that's where the confidence will come from, by talking to the individual schools and say, what have you done to make the school safe for my child to return on the 1st of June? And that, that conversation takes place with the head, um, and then the parent will make an informed choice, right for the child as to whether they think it's safe for the child to return to school. Some children have actually done quite well being home educated. Some children will probably miss their friends and their the classroom environment. So, you know, it isn't one, one decision fits all. It's what the parent considers to be right and safe for the child. And of course, as you said there, then, so the, the, this, you know, you're recommending the, the government advice to, to go back. But as you said, it is a parental choice whether to or not. And can you confirm yeah. as well that, you know, if parents don't you know, send their children back, they're not going to be fined or penalised at all, are they? Absolutely not. No, no, absolutely not. Um, the, the, the fine system uh, has it, been suspended until, until the government says, right, every child is back at school. Um, you know, there are no restrictions. Every child is back at school then obviously you know, the, the, the same principle of our fine system would, would come back into play. But at the moment, because it isn't compulsory, it's just recommended, and I totally respect parents' choice. I was supposed to say no go to parents who are making those decisions now. Um, it, it, there, will, there will be no fines for not attending school from the 1st of June now.